Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's the final part of the My Own Steam Train series where I'm going to be finishing off the Flying Knotsman train, and that means I need to add some carriages and have it going around Brick Nottingham. Now before we get started on new stuff, I've just got a few amendments suggested by you, so I'll bring in my bedoying buzzer so I can give you your just rewards. Uh, one was to change the drum head on the back of this balcony or observation car uh, and a lot of people suggested I should have it attached from the bottom uh, which I did try but it didn't look as good because it was kind of too low then I think uh, but I did change the clip that it was attached to to gold and that looks a lot better I think you'll agree so thanks very much for that uh, another suggestion was on well, adding another one of these columns just to make it look a bit more robust. So I've done it on one side so we can kind of see both. So that's kind of with and that's kind of without. It is a bit more open like this, but I think I do like it with two. So I think I'm going to add that to both sides. So thanks for that. Uh, a lot of people noticed that I'd forgotten a door handle on the door that gets you onto the observation deck on the back. So you can probably just make out in that uh, darkness that I've added one in there. But they all count, these amendments, so thanks very much for that. Uh, and then the other one was to this uh, bar car, basically. We figured this area was a bit too plain. So again, I've done the amendment just to one side to make it look a bit more ornate. And that's just adding some gold one by one round bricks and one by one plates just to make it look a bit more uh, significant, I suppose, and I think that's a definite lock, so I'm going to do that to both sides, so thanks for that. Uh, now, another one in here that I haven't yet done is making the bar a lot more visible because, well, it's hidden in there and we really can't see it, and it's such a fantastic scene. Uh, so that bit there, that plate end there, is actually the bar, but I figure what I might do is try it by moving that bar down to here, so it'll be a lot lower. Uh, but it will be in the beginning of the window section. So that will mean the staff have got a bigger sort of area for themselves. Uh, but we should be able to see what's going on with the barman. So I'm going to do the other half of the amendments when I've only done one side. And I'm going to move the bar and we can see how that looks before we get started today. Right, so there is the improved nameplate, not just on one side, but on both. And I think that looks a lot better. I could have gone all the way around with gold, but I thought that would be a bit too much. Uh, and yeah, it's limited what you can do with one brick and two plate height. But yeah, the name of the carriages is the Leviathan, pulled by the locomotive, the Flying Knotsman. So yeah, I really like that. Uh, and here is my modified bar. So it's basically two studs to the left uh, and a little bit lower, which enables us to see a lot more of our barman on the inside and his uh, cocktail making skills. And we can definitely see more of him through the window as well. We can see his little cheeky face there, his cherries and his glass and all the rest of it, even the bottles on the uh, optics right up there. Now it will of course be a lot darker when we've got the roof on, but uh, at least it's an improvement of where we were before. So thanks very much for that suggestion. Uh, now before I put the roof on, uh, I do have a roof amendment to do to one of the carriages today uh, and it will be using this kind of ship windscreen which I kind of think of as being from a ferry but it's been on all sorts of boats and other vehicles as well actually uh, but I bought four of these so I could make a really interesting roof because it's kind of the same cross section as the roof pieces that are here already albeit I will have to recess it slightly into the sides and I thought that would make a really interesting dome car. Now, uh, the real question is, which car do I want to make into a dome car? I could add it to this bar one and put all the windows in the roof, and then we'll be able to see our barman really well, and that's quite tempting, actually. Uh, another idea, much like on the American uh, Orient Express, is to have one car that's not only got the observation deck on the back, but also has the kind of dome on the top as well on the same car to make it a really, really sort of double feature observation car where you can see in absolutely every direction at once. Uh, but my original plan was to have five unique uh, carriages. So we've got that one, this one too, and at the moment we've got three, four being the standard car. So I thought I'd make one of my standard cars standard and I'd make the other one the dome car and that way I would have five unique carriages. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and maybe we'll have today's scene which involves Monsieur Poirot <laughs> as the uh, detective 
because obviously this being loosely inspired on the Orient Express, having a murder scene for murder on the Orient Express, or in this case, murder on the Leviathan, might be a really good fun thing. So if I do that and set that up in a regular car, and then we have the dome uh, windows to look at it from above, then I think that might be really good. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm fully prepared to take it out again and put it on top of the bar car if it doesn't look that great. <laughs> Okay, so here's one of my standard carriages. And as you can see, I've loosened up the section I'm going to be taking off. Uh, and I need all these pieces to do my baggage car, which I'll be doing in a moment. So I'll put that safely to one side. Uh, and then I can start to incorporate these pieces. So I need some spaces to get everything absolutely bang on. Uh, but essentially, I'm just adding some sort of plates in between each of the sets of windows to make two and then two halves to make four. Uh, and then this jumper plate that's on each end is actually going to fit into the Technic axle hole on the end of one of these as well. So I need to just have a very thin strip of dark green, which I'm going to have as tiles because we won't have connections along that edge. So it'll kind of be pinned between the two ends. So I'm probably gonna to have to take one of them off just so the whole thing will go in. And I'm gonna join the two halves together just using a two by two tile on the underside there. Okay, so that should, ooh, I'm gonna have to take these off briefly as well. So that should slide in like that, then that like that, and then, ooh, then we can start piecing it back together again with these. One, two, and then that, which I might have to kind of lift up and then push down. Ooh, <laughs> that worked rather well actually. Golly, not that difficult after all. I think the hardest part was finding four of those windscreens. Uh, but there you go. So we've still got the continued green stripe on the outside. We've got the white roof all at the same level on the top. So it's not actually raised at all. Uh, but then we've got all of those lovely glass panels in the top. Now, just to make it look the same as my other ones, I could have a round uh, two by two tile there, but I kind of thought it got in the way of the window. So I wasn't too sure about that. Uh, but I could put one on each end like that, kind of just overhanging the glass a little bit. So I wasn't really sure if I liked that either. Uh, so I thought what I might do is use some of these quarter tiles just to do the bit that's sort of left behind on the normal section of roof and leave the new section of roof completely unchanged. So I'm not sure, because I haven't done this myself yet, I'm not sure which one I prefer. Uh, but you see, whichever way I do it, at least it will be aligned with the other ones. Yeah, I think I might prefer the full round on each end. And maybe I'll do one on each end and then we can kind of see them side by side. Yeah, what do you think? I'm thinking that looks a little better though. I'm wondering if that's, no, I don't think that's at a funny angle. Yeah, I think I might do that. But anyway, there is my glass roof for a dome car. And now you can see that I will have five uh, unique cars. So one, two, three for the standard, four for this, and five for the baggage one we're doing in a minute. Uh, now, as for the scene that I want to do inside here, I want to do a murder on the Flying Knotsman scene, or, f or murder on the Leviathan, I suppose I really should call it. Uh, and the stars of this will be Poirot, of course, who's trying to solve the uh, murder. Uh, then we're going to have uh, Gerald the guard, who is just one of the staff working in the carriage. Then we've got the unfortunate who has been murdered <laughs> very callously with a dagger to the stomach. And that I thought would be called Belle Innocente, uh, who is the poor uh, ingenue who's been uh, dispatched. And she'll be sort of in a prone position like that. And then who are the suspects? Well, we've got uh, Belle's ugly sister, Cruella Corset, uh, who's loosely based on the uh, Lego uh, movie Wild West Wild style because I quite liked her corset and so on. It's a bit old school. So there we are, her with a shocked face. Uh, the NFL star was also on this uh, train. And this is Tom Shady, who is obviously the Series 8 football player as well. So Tom Shady there. Uh, and then we've also got another suspect, which is the adventurer, Diego Venger, who is the Series 12 swashbuckler. But I thought he was quite fun as well and quite hard to use elsewhere. So I've got these three uh, potential innocent people and potential ne'er-do-wells, <laughs> a murdered body and a detective to solve the crime. Hmm, will he do it? 
So I've had to totally dismantle this to get this scene in, uh, but then I'll be able to rebuild it at least afterwards. So that's what we'll be able to see from the outside. All the main protagonists swooning over the dead body. Uh, and if I look at uh, the inside, what I've done there, I've got the innocent with her legs on back to front, just so I can make her sort of be limply draped over the table with that uh, dagger plunged into her. Uh, but I think that looks good. Uh, and then we've got all of the three suspects around uh, Poirot in the middle there over the body looking for clues. So I think that's quite a good scene to have on the inside. And hopefully we'll be able to see a lot of it through the roof as well. I've just realised I've done it quite to one end, uh, but at least we'll be able to see the uh, victim herself. Uh, but wait, there is another thing, actually. Uh, there's a lot of space at the other end of the carriage. And we do have Gerald the guard. And... Although he started off the day with white gloves for his silver service duties, it seems that something has stained one of his gloves. Uh, I don't know what it could be, but he's looking very shifty now uh, and is very keen to get away from the scene of the crime. So, yeah, I wonder if he was involved. Hmm. Right, I'm going to build the rest of this carriage up, uh, put the lid back on and we can look at it again. OK, all pieced together again, and I think it's looking really good. You can see that wonderful scene of the murder on the Leviathan on the inside of there, with our victim on her back on a table, having been viciously stabbed by one of these people. And there's Poirot looking over the body. And we can also see Gerald there with his soiled, bloody glove running away. Yeah, and he's looking a bit shifty, if you ask me. So, yeah, I really like that. And I think the domed roof actually lets in a bit more light here and lets us see that scene a lot better. And there wouldn't be enough room in the bar car to do a great big murder scene. Tables are different and everything. Uh, and you may notice that I've done a slight change to the roof. Before, I had the bracket pieces that are in the middle uh, facing downwards on the inside and had the tile join them together. I've flipped them so they're on the outside now and we've got the two by two round tile on the outside which sort of better matches other carriages. It's slightly higher just because of the sort of lip of those brackets on the outside but I figure that's fine because well it is a totally different roof after all. So there is our murder scene slash dome car complete uh, and I really like it. I think it looks really good. So now we are moving on to our fifth unique car, which is the baggage wagon. Now for the order of these carriages, I'm going to have the balcony or observation carriage on the back, then the two normal ones, one with a dome now, of course, uh, and then at the other end, I'm going to have the bar car with kind of the staff section at one end. But ahead of that, even more, will be the baggage carriage. Uh, and it will be closest to the locomotive itself uh, because, well, that's the dirtiest area of the train with all the smoke coming out of the locomotive and the coal dust from being refilled and so on. It's very filthy indeed. So it's best to keep the uh, high paying guests all a bit further away wherever possible. Uh, so I'm going to be basing this uh, baggage car very loosely again on the Orient Express, uh, which has got very solid sides, but still follows the same sort of shaped uh, carriage and pattern for the doors and so on. Uh, and then it has sort of a pair of sliding doors on each side to get all of that uh, uh, baggage on and off. So basically, if you are interested in some of the sort of smaller elements of the build like the sort of ends I've got here then do look at earlier videos where I go into those in a lot more detail but for this one I'm going to kind of power on through and just start adding them quite quickly. I'm also going to be adding my angled doors which is another setup that I've covered a couple of times before and I've got four of those to do as you can probably imagine. And this will be a really nice sort of solid lump of dark green, I think, which is just a fantastic colour for Lego bricks. It's definitely one of my favourites, so I was very glad to be able to use it for this. It was either that or dark blue, which probably would have been a bit too close to the genuine uh, train of the uh, Orient Express, and it would have got too many comparisons, because I'm not trying to replicate any real-life train, especially not with a locomotive. It's more of a homage to an old Lego set, that one. Uh, but there we go, there is our continued stripe 
as you'd expect to see with the rest of the carriages, uh, but with just a solid section with no windows in at all. Then I want to do some sliding doors. So I'm going to use the same technique that I used on the back door on the uh, observation car, which is just using some jumper plates so we can offset everything just by half a stud, because a whole stud is probably too much, and basically have the hint of a sliding door there and there. And I think that's a really pleasing effect. And you can kind of get the idea that that is a sliding door. Now they don't have handles, much like the, the, the uh, door handles for passengers and for uh, staff. So I've actually done an alternative here, just with a slightly different modified plate in gold, just to see which we prefer. So I'm going to do one side with one and one side with the other, and then we can decide. I think I'm liking this one more already, but there is the plain one. Uh, and then in the middle, we're just going to have the only one of these modified bricks that we usually have uh, three of as decor, just because the other two kind of align with the sliding doors uh, and have that as a sort of solid centre section back on the normal edge of the train. And that's got one window in it, just like the original Inspiration carriage, uh, which gives us uh, a bit of light on the inside, but we won't be really looking into this carriage too much at all. So yeah, it's probably the most plain but I think still very attractive. Oh yeah, I really like those handles. I think I'm gonna to have to do that to both sides. Uh, let me stop, do that to the other side, and then we can continue with the roof. Well, I was gonna leave that choice with you, but it just looks so obvious that I need some different handles for the sliding doors, and I think they're absolutely perfect on both sides. So I'm not going to give you that choice. I'm gonna make it for us and just say, yep, that's awesome, we're doing that. <laughs> but uh, then I can add on the second tan stripe and I'm having to use these two wide plates here uh, in order to incorporate the jumper plates that we used for the recessed sections uh, and it doesn't really matter because as I say we won't be going on the inside of this carriage at all as members of the public so there we go that's the second stripe looking good it's quite a block of solid color but you know we have got all of the other carriages of course to uh, you know give us all of the detail and interest throughout. So there we go. Here's our center section. So if I just put on the ends, then I'll be able to just hopefully attach that in one go. It probably won't work, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And you see why I needed to do the new roof first, because I needed the old roof for this section. Oh yes, that worked very well. <laughs> so there is our baggage carriage. And that looks really nice with those rounded ends and the rounded roof ends. And my favorite bit, this sort of curved line here. And the new handles are an absolute definite. Really like those. So then we can add on the under central section, which a few people did tell me the name of, but I've immediately forgotten it, which is usual sort of form for me. <laughs> then we can add the... Uh, bogies on the left and right. And there we are. There is our completed baggage carriage and I think that's looking really really nice so essentially we're going to have that then we're going to have that then I reckon the dome should go in the middle uh, just to give a bit of kind of a central focus then the standard car uh, and then of course the observation car right on the other end so it's going to be quite a long beast when you consider the fact that well we've got a uh, uh, a three-part locomotive as well on the front. So the main thing that remains, of course, is to see this going around the city. And wow, I'm really looking forward to it because I haven't seen it either. All right, I've brought it all up bit by bit to the Lego room safely. No droppages, <laughs> which is always good. I'll have to put the wonderful Zeppelin train, which has been enjoying the track more recently, to one side. Uh, and I'll start building this. So first is that brand new baggage car. Uh, and I will be joining all of them together with one by two grill pieces just across the buffers because it gives it a lot more strength. You can see I've done it there. Uh, it just means that nothing will come apart <laughs> into two separate trains while we're doing our first test, which is always a good start. 
Okay, well I have done a lap of the track with all the carriages on, which I'm not going to show you because there are a couple of issues in it. Uh, first of all, the motor for the entire train is in the coal tender, and because of the added weight of all these carriages, it was basically bucking around like a bucking bronco, uh, unable to sort of take all the added weight without, well, any weight itself essentially. I think much like a lot of, uh, of the older train sets, it probably needs some ballast just to keep it kind of pinned to the track, so all of that power can be transmitted into forward motion. So what I've done as a stopgap just for today is I've put two very large and heavy sort of black colored bolts that I had uh, from, well, an old piece of furniture, I think, or something. I can't even remember. One there and one there, just to give that extra weight to that back axle. So we've got a lot more of the energy getting transmitted to the track. So I'm hoping that will solve problem number one. Uh, and then problem number two was on this very back carriage where I did have the uh, two sort of side lights which essentially would be reflecting red backwards so any following train would know that they were approaching the back of this uh, and I'm going to have to remove those uh, or rather maybe amend my tunnel because of it being eight studs wide and those supports you can see one on the inside uh, that white thing in there uh, that is eight basically wide uh, and essentially it clips it every single time and causes that back carriage to kind of disconnect from all the others. So just for today, in order to have a proper uh, video of this running around the city, I'm going to, well, remove those lights like I have already and add that temporary weight on there and I'll do a much better solution uh, in the longer term. Right, so onwards with the inaugural public run of the Flying Knotsman train pulling the Leviathan. And I think it's probably best to start this off slowly just because of that power transmission problem. And we can start to crank it up. Hopefully it won't hit anything too badly going through the tunnels now. There we go. Looking very nice. I always think this is the best view. Oh yes, I love that American style balcony end on the observation car and you can probably hear every now and then, I don't know if it's on the corners or what, but that sort of power from the coal tenders kind of slipping or skidding a bit because of that lack of weight. So as I say, I'll have to go away and try and fix that on another day. I'm going to crank up the power a little bit more now, so we might hear it slipping even more. But it's definitely looking very nice. Those five white curved roofs are absolutely beautiful. Oh yes, and you can hear, even hear that sort of chuff, chuff, chuff noise. <laughs> of a steam train, which is absolutely fantastic. Now that isn't the fastest speed for all of the trains around my city, by any means, but it's probably fast enough. <laughs> and I do like the chuk 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 noise. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Let's get one of it going through the station. Very good indeed. Cool. So which is your favourite carriage? Is it the baggage car? Is it the bar car? Is it the wonderful dome car with murder scene? <laughs> the ordinary car? Probably not. Or is it the observation car on the back with that wonderful balcony? Wow, I'll have to stop spinning or I might start falling over. <laughs> Thank you. 
I do like my city being very busy indeed, but it does mean that uh, you can't even watch the train all the way around. You're kind of watching for it in gaps in the uh, furniture, so to speak. <laughs> Beautiful. And I do love that chuff, chuff, chuff noise. Can't get over how good that is. Right, we need a chase cam. So apart from a few problems with getting the power onto the track at the end there, I think the Flying Knotsman train pulling the Leviathan has been an absolute success. I absolutely adore the dark green, I adore the white roofs, especially with that uh, dome car in the middle now. And I think it's really come together really fantastically well. So as always, do let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a haul on Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll be doing another Fairground Friday to incorporate some of the rides into a cohesive mass uh, with what is at the moment a great big heap of mess <laughs> but whatever we get to uh, I'm sure we'll have great fun so until then see you